that song. Hallelujah. But I'm glad it still got something on it in this house. Yes, it does. Glory to God. Thank you, Darwin. For the next few moments, and I'm going to move us along. So, I want to add a little bit to uh, the, the, the message of um, designed for dominion. But I want to talk to you from this particular thought. Disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. Disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's in Second Peter one, starting at uh, starting at verse one. Second Peter one, starting at verse one, it says this: To those who have received a faith of the same kind as ours by the righteousness of God. And Savior Jesus Christ grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ seeing that his divine power has granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence for by these he has granted to us his precious and magnificent promises so that by them you may become partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust now for this very reason say this very reason for this very reason also applying all diligence say discipline Applying all discipline in your faith supply moral excellence and in your moral excellence knowledge and in your knowledge self-control and in your self-control perseverance and in your perseverance godliness and in your godliness brotherly kindness and in your brotherly kindness love. For if these qualities say if these qualities if these qualities are yours and are increasing they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent. Say diligent. diligent. Say disciplined. Diligent. Be all the more disciplined to make sure, make certain about his calling and choosing you for as long as you practice say practice say exercise as long as you exercise these things you will never stumble for in this way the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you so again for the next few moments I'm going to just talk a little bit about disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion I so appreciate again Pastor Jamal's message on uh, design for dominion. But one of the things that we've got to recognize that if we're going to really walk in dominion in the seven spheres of cultural influence, as we call them, we've got to walk in dominion in our own lives. We've got to walk in dominion in every area of our lives. And so the writer here, he's saying, now that you have this faith that you're operating in, he says you're going to have to be diligent to walk this out. In your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge, in your knowledge, self-control, and in self-control, perseverance, and in perseverance, godliness, in godliness, brotherly kindness, and in brotherly kindness, love. For these qualities are yours and increasing They render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to say to you that very recently we had the reversal of Roe v. Wade. And 
in, in the realm of the spirit, that one decision removed from our nation a curse over our nation that came with that being set in place. But you have to understand this, that laws only govern behavior. Laws only govern behavior. So part of our responsibility, though, as believers is to set godly people in those roles. That's why we took the time to pray for Treva Reed, who is uh, running for mayor. We need godly people serving in these roles who, who then can enact, if you will, policies and things that help our nation come more in line with the scriptures, with the word of God. We must remember, hear me now, our nation is not governed by the word of God. Our nation is governed by the Constitution. And the Constitution was written in order to benefit certain people. The Constitution was written in a way that, that causes it to be continually open in many ways to interpretation. So, while there is the um, celebration, the acknowledgement of that being overturned, what it also did was it exposed hearts. And it exposed hearts in the world and in the church. And so there is this place that we have to align ourselves with as kingdom people. Say kingdom people. Now that's the only message I got for you. The kingdom of God. And there are times when you're sharing things that may sound like you're coming from a political bent or political platform, but that's just the reality of what we're called to do. We're called to speak into every cultural sphere. Government is one of them. Government is one of them. And so we have to recognize that even with that law being overturned, things aren't necessarily getting better in the natural. It did shift something in the spirit. But the body of Christ, the ecclesia, we are the ones who enforce the kingdom. We are the ones who shift, if you will, the spiritual climate. But because we have been void in so many of these areas, We've given the enemy free reign to run rapid and to produce all the things that we see going around us. We do need to repent and ask God to give us the grace to move back into the place of dominion. And that's what God is doing. This is what he's allowing us to do. But there are disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. And so the writer, when he speaks here, and he says, add all of these things, for if these qualities are yours, now that word if means you can be a believer and these qualities aren't operating in your life. And you have to know this, that if these qualities are not operating in your life, then you're not walking in the disciplines of kingdom dominion. You may be saved, you may speak in tongues, and you'll probably go to heaven. That was a joke, you'll go to heaven. But you will not have been of any real earthly good because you didn't recognize the disciplines that come with it. And I'm convinced of this, particularly as I have the opportunity to travel and be in various settings, that God is moving to raise up and grow up his church as quickly as possible. Listen, that's why for some of you, you're being challenged the way that you're challenged right now. Because God is giving opportunity for you to change, you to shift, you to repent, you to grow, and move into the place where he's always intended for you to be. He's doing this with all of us. I said all of us. In this particular chapter, it says, for he who lacks these qualities, the qualities we just read, said, is blind and short-sighted. Short Many believers are walking around blind and short-sighted. We're thinking that that has nothing to do with me, when in fact it has everything to do with all of us. Because you see, the only thing that's causing this world not to go to hell is the church, Holy Spirit being here. 
And I'm not cussing for anybody who's watching this, and if you think that I am, I'll let you work that out. So he ends up by saying, therefore, brethren, be all the more diligent, be all the more disciplined to make certain about his calling and choosing you. For as long as you practice, exercise these things, you will never stumble. For in this way, now listen now, for in this way, the entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied to you. Now I want you to just catch what this is saying here. What it's saying is, as you live in this place, exercising these things, what it's going to do for you is, it's going to cause you to be able to further move into the kingdom. The entrance into the eternal kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ will be abundantly supplied you, meaning that you're going to keep moving, you're going to keep growing, and you're going to find yourself in the expanse of the kingdom. One of the things that's challenging for many believers is, is, is this fact that they came into the kingdom, but, but as I've shared before, but they've never moved past the door. They've never disciplined them lives, their lives in a way that caused them to see the more so that they can experience the more. No limits, no boundaries. I see increase all around me. And then pray that prayer of Jabez, enlarge my territory. God, enlarge my territory. And oftentimes God is saying, I will enlarge your territory when you've disciplined yourself in kingdom dominion over the territory you have right now. Ah, uh, that is good. I, I, know, I know that's not, maybe not an amen moment. Maybe that's an ouch moment for you. So let me share some of the thoughts when I talk about disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. One of the areas is our mind. Say my mind, my thoughts, my body, my flesh. Oh. Yeah. See, if we're going to talk about dominion, it's got to start with us. My question to you is, do you have dominion over you? Unless you find yourself trying to exercise dominion in some other way, and the enemy saying to you, like the spirit, like 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 the spirit said to the seven sons of Sceva, Paul, I know. And Jesus, I know. But who are you? Meaning, you have no power. You have no authority. You have no right to dominion. Come on, say the mind. This is what it says in Romans chapter 8. Listen to this. Romans chapter 8, 1 through 9. It says, therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, weak as it was through the flesh, God did. Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. And as an offering for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh so that the requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. You see, the laws were set in place, but it was never set in place as the final thing for us. It was just until Jesus came. It was just until Jesus came. And those laws being in place were in place so that he wouldn't have to kill us. When he brought the children of Israel out of Egypt, he gave Moses the commandments. He said, you're going to have to live by these ordinances. It goes on there in Romans 8 and it says this, for those who are according, for those who are according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who are according to the spirit the, thing, the things of the Spirit. For the mind set on the flesh is death, but the mind set on the Spirit is life and peace, because the mind set on the flesh is hostile towards God. For it does not 
subject itself to the law of God, for it is not even able to do so. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. However, you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. You see, there has to be, if we're going to walk in dominion, there's got to be a, a, a dominion, if you will, or a disciplining as we walk out our lives as spiritual people. As spiritual people. We're going to either operate in the flesh or we're going to operate in the spirit. And the more we discipline our lives, the more we set ourselves to be consistent as spiritual believers walking in the spirit. When we talk about walking in dominion and we talk about walking dominion in the seven spheres of cultural influence and all those different things, your ability to walk in dominion concerning you is what gives you the authority to walk in dominion in any area that you find yourself in. See, the responsibility for this flesh to cooperate and align itself with the word of God is not the Holy, it's not the Holy Spirit. Who's a, who's a policeman watching over us to make sure we don't mess up. No, it's you are. You are the one. I am the one. And we walk out of that place of discipline that causes us to live our lives out of the spirit. And when we're living out of the spirit, then we're not, we're not fleshly in our actions. We're not fleshly in our responses. I'm talking about disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. Truth be known, if we're not careful, we can be making decisions and we think it, and, 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 and we're saying it's the spirit, but it's really the flesh. We can say it's the spirit, but it's really the flesh. And then we try to justify it. Okay, that's... It's, it's, I've made this statement before, and I want to make it again. When we looked at this property, and we looked at purchasing this property, I prayed just as hard that if it wasn't God, don't let it go through as I prayed for it to go through. Can you pray that kind of way? Are you willing to pray that kind of way for that house, for that car, for that spouse, for whatever it is? Are you willing to pray that hard? That way. God, if it's not you, I don't want it. I don't want my flesh to be overriding something. I'm talking about a place of discipline. It says 2 Corinthians 10, 1 through 6. It says, Now I, Paul, uh, myself urge you in the meekness and gentleness of Christ. It says, I who am meek when face to face with you, but bold toward you when absent. I ask that when I am present, I need not to be bold with, with the confidence with which I propose to be courageous against some who regard us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war against the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, King James, King James says carnal, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations and everything raised up against the knowledge of God, and we are taking every thought captive. Say every thought captive. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ, and we are ready to punish disobedience whenever your obedience is complete. Paul is making it clear, yeah, we're in the flesh, but we're not warring against the flesh. And there is the need for us to be continually reminded of that, remind ourselves of that, lest we find ourselves dealing with situations in the flesh. Sometimes the best thing that we can do, now I'm talking about a place of discipline, sometimes the best thing you can do in a situation is not say anything. Walk away. Deal with it in the spirit. For our weapons of warfare are not 
fleshly or carnal, but divinely powerful to destruction of fortresses. We are destroying speculations in every lofty thing raised up against the knowledge of God. Sometimes the dominion you need to, the dominion you need to take, want to take, is over your own thoughts. Over your own thought life. Pull down those thoughts. Pull down those images. Pull down anything that would keep you from having your focus on God and what God has purposed to do in your life. We are designed for dominion, but it starts with taking dominion with ourselves in ourselves. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. We are taking every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. Secondly, when I talk about disciplines to walk in kingdom uh, dominion, I'm talking about dominion over our emotions. I'm talking about anger. I'm talking about our mouths and our words. Oh. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm. Our emotions. Any of us at any time can be given to emotions that we don't need to deal with. I didn't grow up like being an angry person or anything like that, but I know I can get angry. I know of past times when I've said things that I shouldn't have said, didn't need to say. I got one, I got one witness, one, one, one person said, yeah, the rest of y'all like, that's your problem. (laughs) That ain't never been my issue. I'm talking about our emotions. See, this place of dominion means I take authority, dominion, even over my emotions. One of the ways I've learned to do that is out of a a disciplined place of of fasting, crucifying the flesh. That helps me to pull my mind in. I've never been one quick to speak anyway. But I've learned to even say less words. It confounds people when you can just look at them and don't say anything. And they wonder what you think. Oh, well, you're just going to keep thinking because I ain't saying anything. What I got to say won't be for you because you can't do anything about it. Why is this important? Because the times in which we're living right now, hear me, Ecclesia, we're about to deal with some aggression that we've never seen before at the level we're about to see it. And if you have not Move to a place of dominion and discipline in your mind, your thoughts, your body, your flesh, then you might end up being a casualty in what's about to happen and what's on the forefront. The more, the more that we pursue godliness, the more that godly leaders set in place pursue godly and righteous ways, the more the upheaval of darkness in the enemy, it's going to be exposed. That's the world we live in. That's the world we live in. And what God is purposing to do, Pastor Nina, is raise up a body of believers who are mature in their thought life, mature in their emotions, mature in their responses, mature in every way, so that when you and I start seeing some of the things that we see and are confronted with some of the things we will be confronted with, we will not respond like the world responds. We are part of the kingdom of God. We live in a place that's higher, that transcends this realm that we are in, in this bodily form. That's a good time to clap. The Bible says we are seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. You must begin to see from that perspective. 
And if we're going to be able to walk in this place of kingdom dominion, you're going to have to walk in the disciplined place concerning your emotions. It's in Ephesians 4, chapter 25 through 32. It says this, therefore, laying aside, all, laying aside falsehood, speak truth, each one of you, with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. It says, be angry, and yet do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, and do not give the devil an opportunity. He who steals must steal no longer, but rather he must labor, performing with his own hands what is good, so that he will have something to share with one who has need. Then it says this, let no unwholesome words proceed from your mouth but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. Yes, so I want to tell you that it says here, it says, be angry yet do not sin, meaning there are going to be moments when you're going to be angered by something. More specifically, though, it's a righteous anger. It's not just your emotions, okay? It's a righteous anger. But even in that, You and I have to be very disciplined in the words that we speak. Because there's many, many who can share and many of us who could talk about, I allowed myself to get caught up in the emotions and I said some things that, that were damaging. And when that happens, you can't pull those words back. But what you have to do is begin to cry out to God and ask him to cause those words to not take root. You need to pray for crop failure. Plead the blood of Jesus over it. Now I'm serious. Because when I think about my journey and I think about my life, there's some things I wish I could take back and do over. Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only that which is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, and anger, and clan, uh, clamor, and slander be put away from you. It's talking about you can live in, we can walk in a place, and we're going to have to do that in the times that we are stepping into right now. And I'm talking to the mature believers right now. Because if we're not careful, any of us can be looking at the news or looking at something and get angry about it, get upset about it. Now, lastly, it says there, be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving each other, just as God in Christ also has forgiven you. Mm-hmm. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. Let me give you one more and then I'm going to pick it up next week. We're right at 1230 and I think that this is a good time to leave out and we're going to take communion so that everybody feels good about today. <laughs> yeah, communion helps anything. Man, that message was rough, but that communion, that, that, that kind of stuff. Was... <laughs> so let me finish with this one. Mm. Now, mind you, now we're still talking about disciplines to walk in kingdom dominion. So I want to talk a little bit about health and appetites. Mm. Just a couple scriptures, that's all. Health and appetites. Third John 1 verse 2 says, Beloved, I pray that in all respects you may prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers. When we talk about the discipline to walk in kingdom dominion, let me go back to something I said earlier. Being filled with the Holy Spirit, he is in us to empower us. Yes. 
to live victoriously. But the Holy Spirit is not going to get you to the gym. The Holy Spirit is not going to get me on the elliptical in my house. The Holy Spirit is not going to remove uh, the fork from my hand that's got the cheesecake on it. The, I mean, no, I don't, I'm just, okay, I like cheesecake. I'm just, I'm just using that as an example. What I'm saying is this. What, what happened? Okay, it might, it might be my battery. Here, take, take this. Ah, uh, glory. Yeah, right about then. It was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. He's going to have to stop. <laughs> now we're going to get this one in, and then we're going to wrap it up. How you doing, Miles? All right. Can you just bring, just, just give me a little more volume. In walking in kingdom dominion, we, we need to walk in a place of dominion concerning our health, appetites, health and our and our, and our appetites. It's not the best witness and testimony. It's not God's best for us. When we are challenged by the same things that unbelievers are challenged by. Because they're going to ask the question, well, if your God is all of that, then why are you dealing with the same thing I'm dealing with? Now, hear me when I say this. We're in the world, not of the world. Some of it is predicated on DNA. It's predicated family line. It can be predicated on a number of things. So I'm not making light in what I'm saying. What I am talking about, though, is this place of discipline. If we're going to walk in kingdom dominion, we have to have dominion over our physical bodies as well. He says, that, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health just as your soul prospers. But the good, the good health in part is your responsibility and my responsibility. By the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. But there is a discipline and a place of obedience for you and I to walk in. And it's out of that place that you can live your life with a sense of assurance, hear me now, that I am doing all I know to do out of a disciplined place and God is honoring that even as the redemptive work of Calvary is being manifested in my body, in my life, in every area of my life. This is what Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 9, 24 through 27. And I'll end here. He says, do you not know that those who run in a race all run? but only one receives the prize, run in such a way that you may win. Everyone who competes in the games exercises self-control in all things. It says they do it to receive a perishable wreath, but we are imperishable. Therefore, I run in such a way as not without aim, say focus, not without focus, says, I box in such a way as not beating the air, but I discipline my body and make it my slave 
so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified. He's talking about a place of discipline in the physical body, how we live out our lives, and as a result of that, we finish our course in victory. Amen? I'm going to stop right there for now. I know that this word is probably like, wow, 